It's been some 40 years since Sandy Duncan flew into our hearts on Broadway as the boy who never grows up, Peter Pan. Sandy Duncan has been the darling of movie lovers for a couple of decades now. Sandy Duncan, glamorous Hollywood star. She has appeared in a lot of shows, with the most prominent being Peter Pan. I have a place where dreams are born and time is never Behind that charming on-screen personality, Sandy has battled a serious health condition that has left her partially blind. Fans have always speculated whether she had glass eyes or not, but could her public statements about the glass eye be a cleverly crafted lie to cover up her true condition? Join us as we discuss Sandy Duncan revealing the concealed truths about her. Early life and career beginnings of Sandy Duncan Rumors have flown around for the past 50 years about the perceived glass eye of Sandy Duncan. All of these started when she underwent eye surgery at the age of 26. But first, how did it all start for this on-screen diva? Born on February 20, 1964, Sandy Duncan was christened Sandra K. Duncan at birth and grew up in the little town of New London. She grew up as a tomboy who really didn't fit into the crowd as she had a strong desire to become an actress from an early age. Her parents owned a gas station and soon moved from New London to Tyler, Texas, when she was in the third grade. They didn't have enough money to pay for Sandy's dance lessons in school. But the few times Sandy could get in on a dance in school, she brightened the stage and carried the entire performance on her back. At the age of five, she had already performed her first dance recital. Seeing their little daughter do this confirmed the fact that Sandy was made for the screens and, ultimately, for the big time. She didn't need anybody to urge her to cash in on her acting and dancing talents. At the age of 12, Sandy had begun participating in school plays and was badly bitten by the acting bug. She couldn't get them off. She fell in love with the entire process of reading lines, getting into character, and putting on a spectacular show for the audience while watching out for her parents among the audience. She also delved into local theater productions, where she learned the ins and outs of dramas and character development. It was only a matter of time before she landed her first paid acting role at the age of 12. She received $150 a week, working at the local production for The King and I, just before she stepped into her teenage years. Earning $150 a week was way higher than the modest income her father got from the gas station. Everyone in her family was beginning to see the huge promise acting offered for Sandy and the family at large. Her exceptional performances on stage brought a juicy scholarship her way, allowing her to study dance and theater in college after high school. She studied religiously for a year, not wanting the scholarship investments in her to go to waste. But it wasn't enough. She didn't just want to be a dancer. Sandy still nursed dreams of hitting it big on the screens as a superstar actress. She couldn't afford to settle at this point in her life. So after a year, she packed her bags and moved to New York in hot pursuit of her acting ambitions. Sandy Duncan abandoned everything dance and theater back in Texas and kissed it goodbye, completely relegating it to the background as a last resort. New York seemed to hold a conducive environment where her talents could bloom and find expression. Sandy was so excited to take a chance at her dreams as she headed to the commercial city, filled with the hustle and bustle of a million human dreams and never-ending lights. Arriving in New York and getting her first acting role wasn't as easy as she thought. She had to face the rude reality shock of struggling for survival after settling in. Sandy was away from the safety net her parents provided for the first time in her life. Though she once earned handsomely from her first paid acting role in Texas, she left it behind to pursue bigger dreams in New York. She was all alone in the world, with no one to help her. This was going to be the moment of truth, the moment where she would fight to overcome every force of resistance that got in her way of success. Not one to be defeated by short-term obstacles, Sandy hustled to stay in a cramped room where a good number of struggling artists lived together. With her accommodation settled, though uncomfortable, she started working odd jobs to get by and increase cash flow in her hands. All the while she worked those menial jobs, she was always auditioning for roles in new movies that were coming out. She has almost been cast a few times, 
but it didn't turn out to be successful. Sandy kept trying and getting rejected until she got her big break by landing a role as a dancer in a Broadway revival of West Side Story in the mid-1960s. Though this was only a tiny fraction of what she had in mind, it got her foot in the door. Casting for this role would give her even greater visibility for new and bigger roles as an actress. Sandy was determined to do her best to nail this role so she could be offered more acting roles. True to her resolve, she landed newer and better roles after starring in West Side Story. Her rise to become an on-screen TV goddess was fast becoming a reality. Viewers all over the world were getting accustomed to her face on the big screens. Her talent was getting sought after by more and more producers and movie directors. Her personality added fuel to the sensational flames that spread throughout the country. She had big, radiant eyes and a chatty character that made fans all over the world feel instantly comfortable in her presence, as if they'd known her for a while, and as if she were the girl next door. In 1968, Sandy got the starring role for Kim in a Broadway revival of The King and I. That was the same movie she first acted in. It seemed the stars were mysteriously aligned for her in pleasant places, and circumstances were rearranged to work in her favor. Indeed, Sandy Duncan was made for the big screens. Casting for this show the second time, it wasn't as it was when she first starred in it at age 12. Now, she had theater legends acting alongside her, and her performance was going to be compared in stark contrast to their brilliant legends if she ever fell short. Sandy did the best she could, as she deployed all the theater and dancing skills she had acquired from birth, from school, and from different trainings for the show. When the show The King and I came out, viewers left wild reviews raving about the likeness and screen talent shown by the new kid in the block, Sandy Duncan, and they couldn't get enough of her. She performed remarkably well against the intensity of the theater legends on the opposite side of her during the show. This was all she needed to announce herself to the movie world, as more Broadway lead roles quickly came calling for her. She now had a good number of roles to choose from, and she also had the creative freedom to stretch her acting abilities to the limit. The quick influx of lead roles from Broadway led to Sandy grabbing her biggest role in the movie Peter Pan in 1979. She was such a natural for her role in Peter Pan that critics mocked her with the name Born Pan. That didn't stop her. As a matter of fact, it was one of the most beautifully disguised compliments she ever received. Sandy Duncan was a capital E entertainer of the 70s, appearing in commercials, variety shows, even cartoons. But as Mo Rocca shows us, it was her role as Peter Pan. Viewers of the show couldn't wait to see her on their screens as she brought a certain childlike wonder to the boy who wouldn't grow up. Her role in Peter Pan attracted a good number of award nominations from the movie industry, such as the Tony Award nomination. It wasn't long before Sandy Duncan established herself as one of the most legendary Broadway stars. Brain tumors and eye surgery disrupt Sandy Duncan's acting career. It's been some 40 years since Sandy Duncan flew into our hearts on Broadway as the boy who never grows up, Peter Pan. Sandy was caught up in the highs of her mainstream acting success on top charting films when she began experiencing grinding headaches on set. She was shooting for a show called Funny Face in 1972 when severe migraines began popping up in her head, and she required more and more rest in between shootings. At Funny Face, Sandy replaced Melba Moore at the very last minute as she took up the character of Sandy Stockton, an impressionable single Midwesterner who was on her way to Los Angeles to get a teaching degree at ULCA before settling down for a life of TV commercials. The show made waves at the time as a top 10 show, and fans were eating up all the episodes where Sandy came on screen. Away from the camera and lights, however, Sandy noticed that something was going wrong with her head and her eye. She was beginning to suffer deteriorating vision in her left eye as the headaches in her head grew worse with each passing day. An initial trip to the doctor revealed that there was swelling behind the left eye, causing her to head to the hospital for immediate testing. Nothing could be left unchecked or undone because the talent must be protected. After the test came the diagnosis that pierced her soul. Hearing the words come out of her doctor's mouth broke her heart as she thought about her acting career, which had just begun to bloom. 
A 26-year-old Sandy sat looking at the doctor with a downcast expression on her face as the doctor told her that she had a non-cancerous brain tumor firmly lodged behind her left optic nerve. If she could pretend that the tumor didn't exist so she could carry on with her acting, she would. Unfortunately, the tumor gave her clear signs that signaled its destructive potency as her vision was already beginning to fail. She couldn't deny that she was no longer seeing with the left eye as she once did. Doctors didn't want to delay the treatment any longer, as further delay could lead to it getting worse. It was in an emphatic tone that the doctors warned her that delaying the treatment could lead to permanent blindness. Sandy couldn't afford to wait any longer, as postponing treatment just so she could complete her acting in funny face certainly meant that she would lose her vision completely. She had to leave the series immediately so she could prepare for the incoming surgery that would restore her sight fully. Since Sandy was scheduled for a high-risk surgery to remove the tumor mass, her ongoing show was pulled from the air. This led to a lot of speculation on whether the series was canceled. Rumors about the sudden stop of the show spread around the country, as the public wasn't yet aware of Sandy's health challenges. Meanwhile, Sandy had more pressing issues to worry about, as the surgery could easily lead to complications that would damage her optic nerves and eye muscles for life. Sandy had to make peace with the fact that the operation was a really complex procedure that could go south easily, but not operating on the eye at all was guaranteed to result in complete loss of vision. Throughout all of these, her acting career was still at the back of her mind, as she deeply regretted the fact that she had to leave the screens for the surgery. She wasn't so sure if the audience would welcome her back like the first time after taking a break from acting. Dragging her thoughts back to the present, she braced herself for the operation and only hoped that it would pull through successfully without complications that would negatively impact her career. After hours of being under the knife, Sandy came out of a successful surgery. The doctors were able to remove the brain tumor without complications. The only drawback to the surgery episode was that the doctors mistakenly severed Sandy's left optic nerve during the surgical procedure. At only 26, Sandy was never going to see with the left eye again. The damage to the nerve couldn't be undone. There was no way to fix it medically, and so Sandy was condemned to living with only one eye for the rest of her life. Her left eye was completely gone, but her right eye remained intact. Family and friends urged Sandy to get a glass eye replacement, but Sandy would have none of those artificial prosthetics. She preferred using her natural eyeballs, no matter how devoid of sight they were. With one eye gone, Sandy couldn't see things with the degree of depth that two eyes provided. She struggled to make things out with the same ease as before. Adjusting to using only the vision in her right eye was a sort of learning curve for Sandy, and it was especially difficult as she was in the acting profession, where she was required to read and memorize written scripts. The following weeks saw Sandy find her rhythm of seeing with only one eye, she had to wade through her daily tasks with the power of vision completely cut in half. Instead of sinking into an occasional depression like most people would, Sandy maintained a grateful and upbeat disposition, as she was thankful that the surgery went well without complications, and she still had her sight in the other eye. It was a big deal that she didn't end up blind, because that could have caused colossal damage to the acting career she had managed to build from the age of 12. For a year, Sandy was away from the screens as she took her time recuperating and getting back into acting form. The time away affected her growing star power in ways she didn't like. People had all kinds of things to say about Sandy and her current health condition, which had now spread to the entire public. Some people said that she could never perform again with such a medical condition. They couldn't bring themselves to see how someone with only one working eye would be picked over an equally talented actor with two functioning eyes. To the naysayers, her acting career was buried and should be forgotten. Sandy read and heard all of these hurtful remarks from magazines and television stations. Instead of letting those savage comments eat away at her self-esteem, she took the bull by the horns and resumed her dance training and acting career. Nothing was enough to stop her from becoming the television darling that she was meant to be. Making a comeback with an even fiercer determination than when she first shot out, she put her all into the dance training and acting moves. She was aware of the limitations of her visions, so she found creative ways to make up for them as she held her own weight in the theaters. 
Sandy Duncan was going to make the naysayers dumb because of their failed predictions about her. She strived hard in secret to unleash all her thespian potential that the world hadn't seen before. She knew she needed to come in with the same or higher E. She couldn't deny that she was no longer seeing with the left eye as she once did. Doctors didn't want to delay the treatment any longer, as further delay could lead to it getting worse. It was in an emphatic tone that the doctors warned her that delaying the treatment could lead to permanent blindness. Sandy couldn't afford to wait any longer, as postponing treatment just so she could complete her acting in Funny Face certainly meant that she would lose her vision completely. She had to leave the series immediately so she could prepare for the incoming surgery that would restore her sight fully. Since Sandy was scheduled for a high-risk surgery to remove the tumor mass, her ongoing show was pulled from the air. This led to a lot of speculation on whether the series was cancelled. Rumors about the sudden stop of the show spread around the country, as the public wasn't yet aware of Sandy's health challenges. Meanwhile, Sandy had more pressing issues to worry about, as the surgery could easily lead to complications that would damage her optic nerves and eye muscles for life. Sandy had to make peace with the fact that the operation was a really complex procedure that could go south easily, but not operating on the eye at all was guaranteed to result in complete loss of vision. Throughout all of these, her acting career was still at the back of her mind, as she deeply regretted the fact that she had to leave the screens for the surgery. She wasn't so sure if the audience would welcome her back like the first time after taking a break from acting. Dragging her thoughts back to the present, she braced herself for the operation and only hoped that it would pull through successfully without complications that would negatively impact her career. After hours of being under the knife, Sandy came out of a successful surgery. The doctors were able to remove the brain tumor without complications. The only drawback to the surgery episode was that the doctors mistakenly severed Sandy's left optic nerve during the surgical procedure. At only 26, Sandy was never going to see with the left eye again. The damage to the nerve couldn't be undone. There was no way to fix it medically, and so Sandy was condemned to living with only one eye for the rest of her life. Her left eye was completely gone, but her right eye remained intact. Family and friends urged Sandy to get a glass eye replacement, but Sandy would have none of those artificial prosthetics. She preferred using her natural eyeballs, no matter how devoid of sight they were. With one eye gone, Sandy couldn't see things with the degree of depth that two eyes provided. She struggled to make things out with the same ease as before. Adjusting to using only the vision in her right eye was a sort of learning curve for Sandy, and it was especially difficult as she was in the acting profession, where she was required to read and memorize written scripts. The following weeks saw Sandy find her rhythm of seeing with only one eye. She had to wade through her daily tasks with the power of vision completely cut in half. Instead of sinking into an occasional depression like most people would, Sandy maintained a grateful and upbeat disposition, as she was thankful that the surgery went well without complications, and she still had her sight in the other eye. It was a big deal that she didn't end up blind, because that could have caused colossal damage to the acting career she had managed to build from the age of 12. For a year, Sandy was away from the screens, as she took her time recuperating and getting back into acting form. The time away affected her growing star power in ways she didn't like. People had all kinds of things to say about Sandy and her current health condition, which had now spread to the entire public. Some people said that she could never perform again with such a medical condition. They couldn't bring themselves to see how someone with only one working eye would be picked over an equally talented actor with two functioning eyes. To the naysayers, her acting career was buried and should be forgotten. Sandy read and heard all of these hurtful remarks from magazines and television stations. Instead of letting those savage comments eat away at her self-esteem, she took the bull by the horns and resumed her dance training and acting career. Nothing was enough to stop her from becoming the television darling that she was meant to be. Making a comeback with an even fiercer determination than when she first shot out, she put her all into the dance training and acting moves. She was aware of the limitations of her visions, so she found creative ways to make up for them as she held her own weight in the theaters. Sandy Duncan was going to make the naysayers dumb because of their failed predictions about her. 
She strived hard in secret to unleash all her thespian potential that the world hadn't seen before. She knew she needed to come in with the same or higher energy levels as the pre-surgery version of Sandy people knew her to be. Every day, she became better at making up for her visual limitations, until it seemed as if she wasn't living with only one eye in the theater. Acting and going about her dancing as she compensated for her non-existent eye amazed people, as she didn't show any signs of someone being slightly handicapped. If you met her for the first time, you would think everything was okay with her. People kept asking her what the secret was to getting back in shape, considering she only has half her vision. Sandy responded that losing her eye upset her more for cosmetic reasons than professional ones. She was only mad at losing her eyes because of how it would make her look. It turned out she didn't fear her acting or dancing career at all because she got it under control. All she prayed for was a successful surgery without complications, and her wishes were granted. Sandy Claws, her way back. Despite partial vision loss, her comeback rocked the cinemas and theaters as everyone came to watch whether Sandy's skill had deteriorated along with her vision, or whether the opposite was the case. Either way, people still showed up to watch her on the screens, and she picked up from where she left off, showing grit and courage along the way. It was easy for her to withdraw from public life after losing her left eye, but she chose to go in the opposite direction. People all over the world expected her to drop her life as an actress and dancer, since individuals of that era weren't known to be sensitive to disabilities. Painful remarks and snide comments were something she was going to battle with if she chose to remain an actress. She could easily be mocked as a single-eyed actress. Except for family and close friends, no one really cared that much for the feelings of handicapped individuals. An average lady in her 20s would feel that the world just caved in on her, but not Sandy. She refused to be pitied. She refused to give up what she fought and worked for. Sandy stubbornly headed back to acting with her sight dimmed in half. Sandy kept dancing and acting out her scripts in the way her recently altered body allowed her to perform best. Left to her alone, there would have been no problem picking herself up after her rise to stardom was halted. But people didn't see her the way she saw herself. Her directors couldn't get past the fact that she was operating at only 50% of her sight. She wanted to act out her new version, but her directors preferred her previous two-eyed version. She soon realized that people would always judge her book by its cover when film offers began to drop from what they once were. Her directors couldn't afford to cast an actress who had a bad eye that wandered around awkwardly. All of a sudden, Sandy was no longer made for the big screen. In the eyes of producers and scriptwriters, she wasn't picture-perfect enough to snag the lead roles in top-charting movies. Though Sandy did her best to compensate for her partial visual loss, her depth perception and wandering eyeball were embarrassingly evident on camera. Her appearance was a big part of her job, and her facial expressions were an asset. Unfortunately for her, she had no control over how the left eye looked because the nerve was disconnected from her optic muscles. The movie industry punished her severely for this physical shortcoming with the number of movie offers she got steadily drying up. Her aspirations to become a movie star were cut short by the mistake of a doctor during surgery. By this time, Sandy had moved from theater arts to starring in Hollywood movies, and she was doing so well before the eye surgery. Now that there was no future for her in Hollywood, Sandy made her way back to the theater, and Broadway welcomed her back with open arms. Unlike the big-time movie directors in Hollywood, Broadway didn't let her unconventional physical look overshadow her natural acting abilities. She was allowed to progress into roles purely based on her merit. She got back to speed by featuring in some rapidly progressing plays before landing her biggest role in Peter Pan, in 1979. Witnessing Sandy do what she knew how to do best on stage easily relegated her partial blindness to the background. No one who saw her leave the movies back in the theater expected her to perform so brilliantly in her role in Peter Pan. The movie shot her to global stardom as she got her first Tony nomination for the role. Fans jubilated all over the world over her successful re-entry into theaters. The play Peter Pan brought out sides of her acting that weren't seen before. Sandy clinched more award nominations as she satisfied the entertainment thirst of her audience globally. If it wasn't clear before, 
It is now apparent that Sandy Duncan was one of the most iconic figures in the Broadway institution. Her popularity shot out from Broadway in the 1980s through to the outside world. Everyone was enraptured whenever the half-eyed damsel graced the screen for plays. Once again, her partial blindness was greatly overlooked because of her exceptional theatrical performances. She not only ruled the theaters, she was also a diva on television. Sandy headlined famous sitcoms like The Hogan Family and Funny Face. Her lively and chatty screen appearances instantly endeared her to most people. Everyone who watched her already felt like they knew her. Sandy was a spontaneous conversationalist, exuding the regular Jane aura. Sandy's personality wooed her generation and charmed the new generation, who knew nothing about her defective left eye. This new generation looked up to her as a perfect screen goddess who lacked nothing and was self-sufficient. It was easier for her to sell herself to her younger fans as the wholesome on-screen diva whom they patterned their lives after. If not for the fact that she reminded everyone of her bad eye, the new generation of viewers wouldn't know and honestly wouldn't care. They all loved Sandy Duncan and grabbed popcorn whenever her sitcoms and plays were about to air. Sandy thrilled her audience with her dancing and sketch comedy skills as she cleverly incorporated the bad eye into her comic stunt. She lost her chance at success in Hollywood, but found even greater fame and success in theaters and on television. Everything Sandy had inside her to offer her generation was graciously served on the theater floor and behind the television screens. She also offered her singing skills, as some classic variety shows gave Sandy guest spots to showcase her singing skills to her fans and the world at large. The television sensation seemed as if she lacked for nothing as she continued climbing new heights in her career. However, her personal challenges were carefully kept away from the public as much as possible. Her major challenge was the inaccurate measurement of space and environment her partial sight caused. It wasn't unusual for Sandy to fall into regular offstage accidents. Though she kept working on getting her visual estimations right, she was human after all, and mistakes were inevitable. From time to time, these visual challenges led her to bouts of depression, which she fought resolutely. This depression ate deep into her against her will because it touched a really sensitive nerve in her. It got to her in a way that was so painful because the cause of the depression cut short her career in the movie industry. She sought comfort in her Christian faith as she battled through her clinical depression. She was also placed on medication and therapy as major alternatives to battling this faceless monster that threatened to cripple her career in theaters. As Sandy Duncan transitioned into the 1990s, she was already a much-loved screen diva and an easily recognized face in most homes. Her existence wrote an eloquent epistle that humans are much more than their disabilities, and she deliberately proved that her partial blindness wasn't a true measurement of the wealth of talents buried deep within her earthen vessel. To this end, Sandy avoided any talk or speech that aimed to patronize or place pity on her. She didn't need to be seen differently just because her body now expresses itself differently. Sandy abhorred any act of gaining sympathy because of her visual condition. She didn't see herself as different from the typical human. In her mind, she was still that 12-year-old, two-eyed girl who had big dreams of becoming an actress, with the only difference being that she was now living in her dream. The way she carried herself inspired hope in other theater performers who were living with disabilities. The longer they gazed at her as she did her thing on television, the more they saw the possibility of becoming more, the possibility of becoming all they could be despite their disabilities. She didn't reckon herself to be a motivation of any sort, as she just lived out her life while effortlessly planting seeds of hope and greatness in others like her. Though she might not be aware, future stars like Marley Matlin and a host of other disabled performers joined the theaters because she dared to be their North Star North Star. The glass eye rumor wouldn't subside. Refusing to adopt a glass eye after the surgery, as it would stop the bad eye from wandering unnaturally, a section of the public always watched closely to confirm if Sandy indeed opted for a glass eye or not. The contagious curiosity of these rumors of glass eyes spread through her fans and all who loved her. Everyone wanted to know whether Sandy Duncan really uses a glass eye now or if, if she lied about keeping her natural eye. I'm Lee Cowan, and this is Here Comes the Sun, a closer look at some of the people, places, and things we bring you every weekend 
on Sunday morning. In fact, without her input or public statement on the matter, an urban legend had already spread that Sandy had replaced the bad eye with a prosthetic glass eye. No one was patient enough for her to confirm or deny anything by herself. No matter what public relations attempts to dispel these rumors, the myth about Sandy's glass eye kept brewing underground. The rumor was born after the public observed certain things about her facial appearance. The first was that her appearance after the surgery gave off the illusion that she had a prosthetic eye. As blindness and muscle weakness tugged at her left eye, it could be seen to stray sideways at times during interviews or shows. The left eye didn't look focused like her penetrating and intelligent-looking right eye. Her left eye seemed glassy, like it was fixed. Also, during stage performances, because her left eye was bound to be looking at a slightly different angle than her right eye, the stage lighting reflected on the left eye and made it unusually brighter than the right eye sometimes, further fueling the glass eye tales. The glass eye legend also gathered more weight when Sandy was photographed with an eye patch. People who had always wanted to believe in the glass eye theory now had convenient evidence to latch on to their suspicions. They sounded the argument around town that Sandy wore the patch to hide the prosthetic and not to train her good eye till it became strengthened. It was not unusual to read in tabloids that her fake eye had popped out and fallen off the stage. Sandy also added a bit of flame to this rumor by making jokes about her wonky eye sometimes. Sandy shares the truth about her glass eye. The rumors about Sandy's glass eye keep going strong, even after 50 years. Sandy, at present, is an elderly, accomplished actress who has attained the peak of excellence in her acting career. Sensing that the glass eye rumor wouldn't go down naturally unless she spoke about it, she has decided to come out clean about the current state of her left eye. Sandy revealed that it all started at 9072 when she began to lose vision in her left eye, accompanied by chronic headaches. She was just 26 years old and at the height of her movie career when doctors diagnosed her with a brain tumor behind the left eye. She revealed that after the surgery, doctors assessed the left eye and saw that it moved in almost perfect sync with the right eye, so they decided against using a glass eye for her. Though there were times when the left eye strayed a little bit away from the right eye, that wasn't the norm. In in most cases, the muscles in the left eye, though weak, enabled her to unknowingly move the left eye in the direction the right eye faced. So it wasn't like both eyes were facing opposite directions. Doctors saw no need to give her a glass eye, and Sandy, on her part, didn't want to remove her natural eye for prosthetic eyes. She was in love with her endearing blue eyes and wasn't going to trade them for anything in the world. Sandy revealed that her brain tumor helped her accelerate her growth and become a better individual. Sharing with Closer Weekly in an interview, she said that merely considering how she survived the surgery, she always considers herself a lucky girl, and this fills her with hope and optimism about going through life's turbulent challenges. Remembering a moment after the eye surgery took place, Sandy revealed that when she got home, her family doctor, who had been treating her since she was 10 years old, peered intently into her eye and said that something was going on behind her eye. After that moment, the eye started to swell, so she ran some tests to unravel what was going on. It was this subsequent surgery to remove a big brain tumor that clung to the orbit of her left eye that caused her to lose her vision when doctors mistakenly cut the optic nerve of the left eye. Since then, Sandy has revealed that she has never used a glass eye and has no desire for one. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.